So apparently the latest reason why we should all value faith, scripture and revelation more and science, reason and education less is because physicalism is false. Physicalism, very roughly, is the claim that at the most fundamental level of existence, the things that exist are the things that physicists talk about, in their professional capacity, of course, not when they're drunk and they've just fallen over a bush. Yeah, if you're listening, you know who you are. Historically, physicalism has been associated with a decline in divine command and in conservative authority in general. By its very nature, physicalism tends to place ultimate authority in a mind-independent reality, thus denying it to those who rather fancy it for themselves. Thus, in the view of some, if physicalism could be refuted, or at least was generally thought to have been refuted, it'd be far easier to silence those pesky sceptics who've been far too prominent since that damned enlightenment business. So can it be authoritatively said that physicalism is false? In this first episode of a three-part series, I'll introduce you to two common criticisms of physicalism. Next time, I'll discuss common physicalist responses, responses that YouTube anti-physicalists either tend to ignore or misrepresent. Finally, I'll ask what, if any, verdict can be drawn from current philosophical authority. One reason why physicalism is sometimes said to be false is its supposed inability to account for uniquely mental properties such as qualia or intentionality. Qualia are the first-person qualities of conscious experience, such as the redness of which we are aware without any apparent mediating uh, access upon viewing a ripe strawberry, or the raw what-it-is-likeness of tasting its sweetness. It is claimed by anti-physicalists that qualia either tear an irreparable gap in the fabric of physical explanation or constitute genuine knowledge which is, in principle, forever denied to the physicalists. Philosophers often quoted in support of this view include David Chalmers, Ned Block and Frank Jackson. Intentionality, meanwhile, is a property based on a relation, a relation wherein one thing is about something else. More technically, the way my finger pointing at an owl is about the owl. Uh, My finger has intentionality, the, the owl doesn't necessarily have it. What? You're made out of ceramic? What, I've hurt your feelings now because I've told you what you're made out of? This is pretty much like the whole physicalism debate in miniature. Following Franz Brantano, it is then suggested that intentionality of this sort is both necessary and sufficient for some things being mental, as opposed to its merely being physical. Antiphysicalists may then suggest, following Roderick Chisholm and uh, William Van Orman Quine, that intentional terms cannot be properly expressed in non-intentional terms. In other words, that the mental is irreducible to the physical. YouTube anti-physicalists who draw upon such criticisms, or at least their own understandings of them, include inspiring philosophy and ontologistics. Another, although not entirely independent, reason why physicalism is sometimes said to be false is that the fundamental elements of physics can, apparently under some interpretations of experimental results, depend on mental states such as the supposed role of consciousness in determining the wave-particle nature of double-slit results, or the role of boundary information in the holographic principle. The argument, as I understand it, being that if mental states, such as consciousness or intentional thought, are necessary for elements of physics, the physical cannot be the fundamental level of reality. Therefore, there is something that exists prior to physics and upon which physics depends. Physicalism is therefore false. Commonly accepted interpretations of the quantum data that could be seen as supporting this conclusion are Bohr and Heisenberg's, but in particular Heisenberg's Copenhagen interpretation, uh, Wigner's 
account of von Neumann's interpretation and Ravelli's relational interpretation. The digital physics of John Wheeler's it from bit hypothesis is also sometimes cited, alongside a claim that the irreducible intentionality of digital information entails the existence of a programmer's mind. On YouTube, the best known exponent of this physics-based anti-physicalism is probably Johannan Ratz. So, in this episode, I've introduced the two criticisms that are most commonly met on this forum. I've also provided links. No, links, as in opportunities for further independent research. Anyway, next time, I'll discuss physicalist responses to these criticisms. Until then, thank you for listening. <laughs>